5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, which means it's time for BCTV's Weekly Media Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden. I'll get the pleasure of taking you through the next 15 minutes uh, into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news and then on from there into your weekend. Uh, Jam-packed in on this full 15-minute broadcast, we're going to go live to Dealey Plaza where JFK expert and BUHS social studies teacher Bill Holiday is standing by for the 50-year anniversary of the assassination. We'll talk about uh, the search for the town manager in Brattleboro, what happened there, and could be Bernie for president. We'll follow up on that. Plus, uh, we'll check in with the BUHS TV for weather. We'll get plenty more stories, including Vermont Health Connect. It's all in here. It'll all be done in 15 minutes, so stick with us right here on 545 Live. What I have to report here tonight is that uh, that search ultimately was unsuccessful and that we have uh, not uh, reached an agreement with either of those uh, finalist candidates for them to come on as town manager. Welcome back to this November 22nd, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock world news. That is footage from this week's Brattleboro Select Board meeting as Chair David Gardenstein revealed that the board had opted not to accept either of the two remaining candidates in the town's six-month search for a replacement town manager to fill the position vacated by much-celebrated manager Barb Sondag. Uh, and while Gardenstein's comments lingered on the countless hours of board and committee work left out on the table by this decision, finding the right applicant to take the reins of the municipality seems to remain a top priority for this 2013 board. Now this news comes just a week after area headlines highlighted the setbacks faced by BASIC, where Brattleboro Area Skate Park is coming, uh, and that committee, after their expired permit for a wheel-friendly public park at the Crow Lot in Brattleboro, allowed the highly controversial debate over the park's siting to be reopened, something that has many residents tracking the story from both sides of the debate for more than two years now, uh, just a little bit frustrated. For more on that, we turn now to the latest member of our 545 Live team, BCTV on-screen personality, and a good personal friend of mine, Robert Stack. Now, Robert, uh, as a sideline observer of this debate for the last two years, kind of from the outside looking in, and as a, a veteran of public service on the local level as well, that we bring in uh, as we discussed uh, this topic a little bit. What's the takeaway here? Why don't you talk uh, to us a little bit about this skate park issue? Right. Well, you know, I, I, it's very frustrating sometimes, as you just mentioned, you know, but I sort of love it as somebody who likes history. Um, I think it's the American way, and it's so difficult. It's like, uh, you know, you have, for instance, the skate park, you know, so you have kids on skateboards, and then people say, well, we can't have them on the street, we're going to give them tickets, they're running kids, you know, ole, blah, blah, blah. So people get together and say, well, we're going to build them a park. That sounds like a great idea. We're going to build a park, we're going to collect money, we're going to pour cement, and kids can do skateboarding and be happy, and we'll keep them away from drugs and positive activities. Yay, everybody's happy. Then somebody goes, well, yeah, but not here. This is a nice park. I love this park. It's got nice swings. I bring my kids here. It has a great basketball court. And quite frankly, I don't know about these skateboarders. You know, they look a little shifty, a little grunge going on here. And is it safe? And next thing you know, you have other bathrooms and there's competing forces. And, you know, on some level, it's always so you, you, when you want to get something done, like you sort of go, God, can we just do it, you know? And yet, you know, the nice thing about our process, the way we, you know, our country is set up, it's that, well, no, you can't just do things. I mean, there's a process that takes place and there, there's, uh, people get elected, they have elections, people have uh, opinions. And I just, I just sort of take a certain delight in it. I know, it's, I know that must be infuriating to both sides, but I do. I just think it's so healthy to see this sort of vigorous debate. That's been good. Robert, thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to check in with us next week as Robert returns here to 545 Live to talk a little bit about the hot topic of bullying. Okay. We'll look at it on the national level with the latest uh, news from the NFL. And we'll also take a look at what uh, is happening here on the local level in the state of Vermont and uh, in the schools in our area on that topic as well. In the meantime, you can catch Robert uh, each Monday live at 6 p.m. on BCTV Channel 8 as he co-hosts Let's Talk About Mental 
Mental Health, a live call-in show with area psychiatrist Nels Kloster and himself as they debate issues related to mental well-being. All right, uh, with that, we'll move on here and as promised, talk a little bit about that JFK assassination for that back into the close-up we go. This week, the worldwide media has been abuzz with the 50th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's assassination. And one local resident in particular has spent uh, the better part of those 50 years looking for answers, amassing first-hand testimony in the form of interviews with eyewitnesses, autopsy doctors, Warren Commission members, Texas police and corrections officers, and countless others. And it's uh, those pursuits that have landed local BUHS social studies teacher Bill Holiday in Dealey Plaza this week. And yesterday, he was there for the 50th anniversary commemoration ceremony. We'll take you back in time now to yesterday's events in Dealey Plaza as Bill broadcast live uh, over a public Google Hangout for a clip. Let's take a look. In addition to that full Google Hangout Live from Dealey Plaza from Bill Holiday, you can see a special edition of Montpelier Connection hosted by Wyndham District 4 at Mike Merwicky, which featured Bill talking a little bit about uh, his exploits over the last 30 uh, years, trying to track down information about the assassination of John F. Kennedy now 50 years ago. All right, uh, we'll move on now and talk U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders for a moment. The uh, word president was in there in our teaser for upcoming events. For that back into the script we go. Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders has made it clear that he doesn't want to run for president of the United States of America anyway, but he would consider a 2016 candidacy announcement if another independent candidate willing to take on Wall Street doesn't step up to the plate. Now these are statements that Free Speech TV host Tom Hartman had a few questions about this week when Sanders joined him on the air during the show's weekly Brunch with Bernie segment. Somebody has got to get out there and start raising those issues, start organizing people, and start educating. I think there are a number of people who have the capability of doing that. It is three years since uh, uh, until the uh, presidential election, and I think somebody will come forward. But, uh, you know, will I give some consideration to doing that? If other people don't come forward, the answer is I will. Next up, three months later, Energy Nuclear's announcement that they would be voluntarily closing the Vermont Yankee reactor in Vernon remains the talk of the town. With uh, the area's anti-nuclear affinity groups now turning their attention from the plant's uh, closure date to the company's plans for the remaining nuclear waste. As this week, Governor Shumlin joined with members of VSNAP, or the Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel, to begin formal negotiations with Entergy over the plant's decommissioning, something the public got a taste of last week at uh, the VSNAP Open Forum in Vernon, as representatives from Entergy Nuclear attended in person to try and address some of the board's ever-growing concerns like just how much money the plant's decommissioning fund has and how much it will grow as the company begins to rack up the bills from the plant's shutdown. There's no difference in what people get paid to do this work versus that work. Uh, project, a lot of, some of the projects that uh, are planned for the upcoming outage have nothing to do specifically with, with SafeStore, but other, other things that just need to be completed. You can see that full Vermont State Nuclear Advisory Panel Forum on our website, brattlebrotv.org. All thanks to hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez, who's gotten every one of those VSNAP forums in the months since Entergy Nuclear announced the closure of Vermont Yankee, effective quarter four of 2014. She's been there to film them all and put them up on our website, where you can stream them at your leisure, skim around uh, through the nearly three hours of testimony. Uh, and questions answered by representatives from Entergy. From there, we'll move on to another hot topic, health care in the state of Vermont and the Vermont Media Exchange. State officials are reporting that developers have fixed a major flaw on the Vermont Health Connect online uh, exchange website, which they believe has been one of the primary obstacles preventing residents across the state from successfully completing their enrollment in the mandated health care program. But uh, that hasn't changed Governor Shumlin's plans to extend existing VHAP and Catamount coverage through March of 2014 for residents currently receiving state health care coverage, attempting to make the switch to the exchange. And uh, while an extra three months can feel like plenty of time, it's not, warn experts. Like the grant-funded health exchange advisors known as Navigators, which include Vermont Citizens Campaign for Health Executive Director Richard Davis, who serves himself as a navigator. He was in our downtown studios last week to urge residents to work the website as best they can and do it as soon as they can. The coverage is all the same no matter what you pick. Nothing changes. Coverage is all the same. What, what varies is the amount of premium and copay and deductible. So I think the best advice 
to people is figure out what your individual situation is. And in case there weren't enough uh, 545 Live official report segment type things, we've launched a state house report as well, taking a look at what's going on in Montpelier. For that, back into the newsroom we go. Let's roll it. Here's the script on that. Well, Karl Rove's name might come up more than Nancy Pelosi when you think super PAC. It's a Democratic Independent Political Action Committee that's facing a $30,000 fine from the Attorney General's office in Vermont. That's for their failure to identify by address during a series of internet and TV ads released by the group in 2010 against the then Republican candidate for Governor Brian Duby. That's a state mandate violated uh, that prompted Attorney General Bill Sorrell to tell the Associated Press, quote, voters are legally entitled to know who is seeking to influence them. They must disclose their identity, including their address, their donors, and their expenditures to the extent required by the law. That's our State House summary for now. You can follow up by heading to commonsnews.org where they often track what's going on in the State House and have a partnership with Ann Galloway of the highly acclaimed VermontDigger.org uh, action news site. That's enough uh, going off script for me here, so I'm going to roll it again here. It's time to launch into our latest feature sponsored by the Brattleboro Savings and Loan. It's our interactive video calendar. That's right, uh, each week I get a chance to stand up in front of BCTV's uh, video wall and host an interactive calendar with a series of clickable links so folks can look at what events are on deck for the weekend, find out more about how they can get involved and see interviews, clips, and video spotlights from each one of these events and the area organizations associated with them. Without further ado, let's launch in. This weekend, be sure to check out the Sandglass Theater's all-new original performance hosted at their theater space in downtown Putney, all conceived by uh, puppetry master Leela Ghaznavi, who uh, put together this exploration of dance, aerial acrobatics, light effects, and puppetry for two nights of performance, Friday the 22nd and Saturday the 23rd, again at the Sandglass Theater, all set to kick off at 7.30 p.m. we say adieu to another edition of the calendar, we'll check in with one of the fall's most highly anticipated events, the Brattleboro Women's Chorus 2013 Fall Concert, slated for this Saturday the 23rd and Sunday the 24th at the First Baptist Church in Brattleboro, uh, with an evening showing at 7.30 p.m. right here on Saturday and then at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Find out more information about the concert, the chorus, and how to get tickets at www.bmc.org. Now, speaking of uh, events for this weekend, uh, there is also uh, an upcoming event uh, here with Wyndham County Senator Peter Galbraith tonight as he hosts Stephen Ambrose, an acoustical engineer and member of the Institute of Noise Control Engineering, uh, for an open forum on wind turbine installations that's slated to begin in just a few short minutes at 6.30 in Townsend at the United Church of Christ, something that we'll have video of next week to uh, take a look at as they uh, are going to get us that. In the meantime, We've also got uh, a weather report here to pack in before we call it a, a day here on this episode of 545 Live. This is all courtesy of uh, Brattleboro Union High School and their morning news advisory broadcast from the BUHS TV news team. Let's see what this weekend's weather has in store for us. Morning, BUHS. We have a high of 46 and a low of 27 today. Uh, it's also raining. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Saturday, partly cloudy, high of 38. Low of 14, that's pretty cold. Get your jackets on, back to the desk. That does it for another edition of 545 Live here. Thanks for checking in. We will be back next week on a Black Friday post-Thanksgiving uh, edition that will include checking in with the 35th annual Putney Craft Tour, plus all the latest headlines and everything else. 545 p.m. BCTV Channel 8 next Friday. We'll see you then. In the meantime, thanks for watching.